Have you ever seen someone working out for 3 hours and then you leave the gym in 45 minutes and think, is he working out too much or am I not working out enough? What's interesting is that people usually ask this question to see if they're working out enough. Perhaps they're not hardcore enough. Well, what if we told you that there's a better chance you're working out too much? What if we told you that this entire question isn't even what you should be asking? Let's cut through the research and see how much time you need to spend working out to actually get the results you want. Right now, we'll just tell you that you shouldn't copy either of those two. The time one spends working out is often based on FOMO, fear of missing out. We live in a society these days that seems to always be promoting more is better. This causes people to always assume that whoever leaves the gym first is weak. On the flip side, we live in a world where some people are looking for the bare minimum to a fault. We do understand that different people have lives with different circumstances that can dictate how much they can work out. We applaud everyone who chooses to hit the gym rather than the couch. In fact, we even have a minimalist video to make the most of your time. However, some people are only concerned with the minimum regardless of how much free time they have. Both of these situations can cause issues in your life and training journey. Living in the gym will void any other social life, not to mention setting you up for fatigue and overuse injuries. Getting out of the gym ASAP when you don't need to is only going to prevent you from reaching your full potential. So if there's a maximum time and minimum time you should spend in the gym. So what's the ideal time? Let's look at research. We're going to start this journey simple. Let's talk about the numbers given by official guidelines on the minimum amount of physical activity everyone should get. The recommended amount of physical activity is set by the U.S. Department of Health and is the number used by health organizations such as the CDC and WHO. According to these health institutions, to promote a healthy lifestyle, adults should be engaged in at least 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous activity every week, along with two days per week of muscle strengthening exercise. Moderate activity is defined as a brisk walk, and vigorous activity can mean going for a jog or run, depending on your fitness level. For muscle strengthening workouts, they don't give a ton of advice apart from training all major muscle groups two days per week. They give no further guidance on what these muscle strengthening workouts should look like nor how much time should be spent doing them. They also say more is better. In other words, this is the bare minimum that every person on earth should be getting. But again, they're very vague about it. This is a very basic prescription that leaves a lot of room for interpretation. Also, this is going to give you minimum benefits. It could be a lot better. In fact, we now know just how much is better. In 2018, two large cohorts consisting of 116,221 people were followed up for 30 years to track their health and physical activity levels. What they found concerning the duration of physical activity and health will surprise you. All we know is that someone needs to give the health department a call and tell them that an update to their suggestions is desperately needed. We're going to get into what this study found later in the video, but for now, let's get back to the question at large. How much time should I spend working out? After seeing this number prescribed by the health department, we realize that the question how much time should I spend working out can mean different things to different people. We're going to tell you about the time needed for general benefits later in this video. So right now, we're going to answer this from the perspective of optimizing your time in a gym when following a typical resistance training program. To give an accurate answer, we need to frame the question a little differently. Time doesn't really mean anything without more information. For example, is this a traditional session with rests in between sets or is it a 30-minute non-stop circuit? When someone asks, how much time should I spend working out, they're actually asking, how much work should I do? So that's what we'll do right now. And if you want to live longer, be sure you stick around and we'll lay that out for you as well. Let's get into it. Let's first ask the question, why does it matter how long we work out? Well, there's a few good reasons. The first is so you know if you're working out enough. Of course, any amount of training is a good thing and is exponentially better than nothing. However, there is a minimum amount that you should train to get optimal results. Since you've already made the decision to train, we think you should train enough to get maximal results. Or you should at least know how much you should train so you can make an informed decision. Now, the other reason, and perhaps the most problematic, is so you don't train too much. We live in a society that loves to go extreme. Maybe it's the glamorization of being hardcore on social media, but people tend to want to work out excessively. You know, the whole what's a rest day trope and all. People tend to think, I train 7 days a week sounds cooler than I train 4 days a week. While not working out enough basically means you won't see as much progress as you could, working out too much can have more serious repercussions. 
The buildup of fatigue is a major issue that will affect you if you train too much. Notice how we said will, it will happen. Not only can this cause a detriment to your training, it can actually cause injury. Neither option is ideal and it doesn't need to happen. Good thing is, it's an easy fix. So, how much time should you work out? Let's first estimate how much work you should be doing and how much time that should take. There are a ton of variables that dictate how much work you should do. As such, there is a large spectrum which will result in a wide range of appropriate times. For example, let's look at a study which looked at the minimum amount of time you should work out. It's not much at all. When your only goal is to simply maintain strength and muscle mass, you just need to train each muscle group once a week with one set at proper intensity. That's it. When we look at the way the body works, you could hit every muscle group with about six exercises. Assuming you're only using compound exercises as they hit more muscle groups with one movement, think bench press, deadlift, and squats. This means you only need to train six exercises with one set, which equals just six working sets total every week. Being conservative, let's say that each exercise requires five to six minutes of warm-up sets to reach your working set. This means your total training time for the week will only take 30 to 40 minutes. And that's for the week. So there's your minimum amount of time. It's like watching a couple of episodes of Friends. But let's be serious. You want more from your workouts than just maintenance. As you could guess, this is going to require more time. There is a clear dose response between the number of sets you perform and the amount of muscle growth you see. The more sets you perform, the more muscle growth you'll see. This begs the question, so how many sets should you be doing? As you could guess, it's more than one. Unfortunately, there's no hard set number that can be prescribed for everyone. However, thanks to hard work from sports researchers, we have a pretty good idea. To see the optimal amount of growth, the latest research suggests that you should perform a minimum of 10 working sets per muscle group per week. This volume can then increase up to a maximum of 20 sets per muscle group weekly. On this spectrum, beginners should be closer to 10 weekly sets, while more advanced athletes should be closer to 20 weekly sets. Let's assume that people asking this are in the beginning stages of their training journey. Therefore, we're going to stick to the lower part of this range. This means each muscle group should be trained with 10 to 14 working sets during the week. Let's find out how long that would take you. Our main muscle groups are chest, back, shoulders, glutes, hamstrings, and quadriceps. In addition, there are smaller muscle groups including the calves, forearms, biceps, and triceps. However, you don't need to do 10 sets per muscle group as there will be quite a bit of crossover when using appropriate exercises. For example, the bench press will train the chest, shoulders, and triceps. All that to say, when everything is said and done, this usually equals doing 6 to 7 exercises a session. For example, here's what a typical pull day may look like. Trap bar deadlift 3 sets of 5 reps. T-bar row 3 sets of 5 reps. Stiff leg deadlift 3 sets of 8 reps. Wide grip seated row 3 sets of 8 reps. Leg curls 3 sets of 12 reps. Hammer curls 3 sets of 12 reps. Ok, so we now know how many sets we should do. However, unless you're planning on performing one massive circuit training, you won't work through this straight through. Rather, you rest. In fact, when lifting weights, the majority of your time is resting. When looking at how long people are resting in between sets, the answer can vary widely. This is due to different rest periods being more appropriate for different goals. The most basic explanation is that longer rest periods are used for strength training. This extra time allows the body's physiological systems to return to normal and allows the body to restore depleted levels of ATP. Doing so allows more weight to be lifted with greater intensity. This can range anywhere from 2 to 5 minutes of rest between each set. Compared to strength training, shorter rest periods are generally used when muscle growth is the main goal. Rest periods used to be no longer than 1.5 minutes. However, things have changed with this understanding. We now know that longer rest periods are ideal as they allow more volume. In fact, some studies even suggest using 3 minutes. With all that said, the average rest period for hypertrophy is still around 1.5 to 2 minutes. Still, sometimes rest periods of 1 minute will be used sparingly for smaller exercises and circuits after your main lifts. With that said, we believe that the best program is going to train on the whole spectrum rather than only train for muscle growth or only train for strength. So, with all that said, a basic pushing day may look something like this. Squat. 3 sets of 5 reps with 3 minute rest. Bench press. 3 sets of 5 reps with 3 minute rest. Split squat. 3 sets of 8 reps with 2 minute rest. Seated dumbbell press. 3 sets of 8 reps with 2 minute rest. Calf raises. 3 sets of 12 reps with 1.5 minute rest. Triceps push down. 3 sets of 12 reps with 1.5 minute rest. 
Let's assume that each set takes around 30 to 45 seconds to complete, which is conservative. This is how long each exercise will take to complete. Squat, 9 minutes, a bench, 9 minutes, walking lunges, 7 minutes, seated dumbbell press, 7 minutes, calf raises, 6 minutes, triceps push down, 6 minutes. That means these exercises alone take about 44 minutes. Now, considering you need to use some warm up sets for your first couple exercises, and you're looking at about 60 minutes, assuming you're not chatting away at the water fountain. So, how does this number add up against studies? Well, a large review looked at the effect that different variables had on muscle development, including training duration. In total, 21 studies were reviewed and compared. After full analysis, the researchers determined that training sessions less than 60 minutes had the greatest effect on improving muscular power. With that said, the participants of this study were all children and youth ages 5 to 18. Therefore, while this number is interesting, it's difficult to draw a strong assessment as there's a massive difference in the physiological system of prepubescent children, adolescents, and adults. Another large review from Towson 21, looking at the same variables, came up with a similar number. They found that 45 to 60 minutes was the ideal time. This study used participants who were 18 years old of age with intellectual disabilities. We also want to mention that they too suggested a program which used 6 to 7 exercises per day, just like what we suggested earlier as the average. Going through a plethora of other studies, this number keeps popping up 60 minutes. So, taking everything into consideration, it seems like 60 minutes is a good time frame to use. However, there's one more interesting study we should look at that pretty much turns this whole question upside down. It's going to make us reevaluate everything. Famed sports researcher Brad Schoenfled wanted to see what would happen if a lifter using a powerlifting type program and a lifter using a bodybuilding type program followed the same program with the same volume as well. Therefore, two groups of men followed two similar training programs. Concerning the exercises, both groups used the exact same ones and trained three times a week using three exercises per training session. However, things were different when it came to what load, reps, sets, and rest duration. The group followed a bodybuilding type program and trained each exercise with three sets of 10 repetitions and 90 second rest intervals. Now, when looking at a rep scheme, using more weight will result in a significant decrease in the amount of reps. For example, someone may be able to lift 75 pounds eight times while only being able to lift 90 pounds two or three times. Therefore, in order to lift the same amount of volume, the heavier load will need significantly more sets. And this is what happened. The powerlifting group actually did use a heavy load that they could only perform three repetitions with. This means they had to perform seven sets per exercise instead of three. In addition, they had to use three minute rest periods. This resulted in the bodybuilding group finishing their single session in just 17 minutes, whereas the powerlifting group took more than an hour. This means the powerlifting group trained more than three times longer. However, since the volume was the same, they both saw the same amount of muscle growth. At the same time, the powerlifting group saw significantly more strength gains due to their sole use of heavier loads. Therefore, if you are only interested in muscle growth, working out for 17 minutes would be appropriate. However, if you wanted to get stronger, the hour-long session would be more suitable. Now, in real life, this would never play out. A powerlifter lifting the same volume as a bodybuilder. However, it shows that how much time you should work out can depend heavily on what your goals are. Let's continue this scenario with a little thought experiment. Assume the bodybuilding group asked this question, how much time should I work out for? And used time as their indicator for when they should leave the gym. They were going to leave the gym after 17 minutes, but they saw the powerlifting group training for 1 hour and 10 minutes, similar to the intro of this video. Since they assumed they should train just as long, they too decided to train for an hour and 10 minutes, maintaining their intensity and volume. What this means is they did 4 times as much volume. This equals 12 exercises using a rep scheme of 3 sets of 10 reps. That's 36 total sets in one session. You may be able to get away with this type of volume once in a while, but if you're training this way consistently 4 to 5 times a week, you're going to have some issues with overtraining as well as a major drop in performance. We can see this play out with CrossFit. CrossFit consists of a wide variety of resistance training methods, but is best known for its very high intensity training. This study found that just two consecutive days of CrossFit workouts resulted in a significant decrease in anti-inflammatory cytokines, which could potentially suppress the immune system, just two days. And this got us thinking. While some studies report how long training sessions are, time spent is never the experimental variable. In other words, no study really examines how staying in the gym for longer or shorter periods of time affects the workout. 
It's simply the result of doing more or less volume with more or less intensity. In addition, many studies don't even report the duration of a training session. Why? Because it's not a variable that has any bearing on the results, rest period duration, and the number of sets you perform do. However, staying longer in the gym with no other context doesn't help anyone. This is because the duration doesn't even really matter. Rather, the intensity and volume of a workout will dictate how long you train for, and it's these two variables that you should be concerned with. So, in reality, we already went through this in the beginning of the video. You should keep the total sets you train for each muscle group between 10 and 20. At the same time, you should only train each muscle for 10 sets per session. This means you can train a muscle twice a week with 10 sets per session. Or you could train a muscle three times a week and use six to seven sets per session. If you follow these two basic guidelines, you can be confident that not only are you spending enough time in the gym, you're also not spending too much. From there, it's really up to you to choose what your goals are, which can affect your total recovery time. You could use things such as supersets to decrease the time in the gym, but again, your total volume is what matters. With that said, the average gym session following these rules could be anywhere from 45 to 90 minutes. If you're training for strength with longer rest intervals, you'll be training on the longer side. On the flip side, if you're training more for hypertrophy, you should be towards the shorter time frame. Now, some people following a minimalist program could get in and out before this time, which is great. However, unless you're a professional or serious athlete, there's really no reason to stay any longer. But wait, let's look at that living longer number. While time may not be the primary factor of the amount of work you do with resistance training, things are different when we start looking at aerobic activity as time has a direct effect on work. And this brings us to perhaps the most important effect, which the duration of a workout has, how much time you should spend working out to live longer and healthier. Mentioned in the beginning of this video, a large study of two cohorts followed 116,221 participants for 30 years. During this time, their health and physical activity levels were tracked to determine the duration which an individual should exercise to decrease mortality. The number they came up with is significantly longer than that which is proposed by the health department. To refresh your memory, this number is 150 to 300 minutes of moderate exercise or 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous exercise per week. This study published in Circulation Journal did find that these numbers were effective at having a beneficial effect on decreasing mortality, which equaled a 19 to 25 percent lower risk of all-cause cardiovascular disease and non-cardiovascular disease mortality. However, this is towards the minimum amount of benefit. It can be better. They found that there was a trend towards lower mortality that continued after 150 to 300 minutes of moderate activity and 75 to 150 minutes of vigorous activity. In other words, more activity saw a greater reduction in mortality. This trend in longer duration continued all the way upwards to 300 to 600 minutes of moderate activity and 150 to 300 minutes of vigorous activity. This is where participants saw the maximum amount of benefits, two to four times as much as what the U.S. Department of Health recommends. 